Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be sharing my note-taking method that I use in medical school. This is a method that took me all the first year to develop, but now that I have it, it has really increased my memory retention in second year. So if you're interested in learning how to translate and condense your very long university lectures into neat, organized notes, then keep watching this video. All right, so as part of my medical degree, I receive about 15 one-hour lectures. And these lectures, although short, are jam-packed with detailed information. So what I aim to do with every lecture is to condense and translate those lectures, which are usually made up of 50 to 60 slides, into just one or two page summary notes because when it comes to exam time and I need to review, it is so much easier to go through my own summary notes, which are only one or two pages, rather than going through hundreds and hundreds of lecture slides. For all my notes, I use the 12.9 iPad Pro. This is a 2018 one and I use the GoodNotes 5 note-taking app which I have explained in another video on how to use. So if you're interested in learning how to use that, please watch that video. This video, I will be focusing on how to actually take those notes using a particular method. So now I'm gonna go over the seven steps that I take to write my notes. Now, the first step is the easiest step. However, it is the priciest step. Notability and GoodNotes 5 both cost around $12 in Australia. Um, $12 seems like a lot, at least it did for me, um, but I do think it ends up being worth the money, especially if you use it absolutely every day for your studies. So uh, the first step is easy and simple. You go to the App Store and you download GoodNotes 5. All right, so the second step is to open up GoodNotes 5 on your iPad and create a new notebook. You can choose here uh, from several different templates, but I always like to choose the Cornell template. So click Create, and as you can see here, this is the Cornell template. So traditionally, the Cornell note-taking method was developed in 1940s by a Cornell professor, and what he would do is divide your paper like this and here, this is where the title goes, this is where the timestamp goes, and here on this small column is where you would write either questions or cues, and then here would be your answer to that question or the main body of your notes. So to show you exactly what I mean, I'm just going to open up one of my notes that I've already created. So I always like to write my title in red and my timestamp here. Now, I have modified it slightly for medical school. So what I do is on the left column, I write my subsections here. And I, my subsections and subtitles are always in dark blue. And um, instead of having cues or questions, what I do is this is a very, very concise summary of my main body of notes on the right here. Um, and what I do is have really consistent highlighting so everything that you see in pink here is a disorder and everything highlighted in yellow is just either a subsection or a subtitle of my main body of notes. Now anything that is highlighted in blue is just either some sort of vocabulary that I am not familiar with at the time or that I think is testable. So again, those are the three colors of highlighting that I use and I, it's always consistent across notes. All right, so the third step is to open up the relevant lecture slides and take a look at them. I like to use this icon here because I am able to look at many slides at the same time. So I like to just quickly go through that lecture to get a sense again of what exactly the lecture was about. And what were the main topics that were discussed? So for example, here you can see that this is about Parkinson's disease, obviously. They discuss clinical features, pathology of Parkinson's disease, and some treatment. So three things right there. Symptoms, pathology, and treatment. So those are three subsections that I should definitely have in my summary notes. All right, so I'm gonna open this up in a new window so I can have my lecture notes side by side when I'm starting to make my summary notes. 
Now, step four is admittedly the hardest part, and that is to sit down and actually read carefully through your lecture and pick out the most pertinent information in that slide and translate them onto your notes. And always remember to highlight them in the appropriate color. All right, so step five um, is the funnest part in my opinion, and that is to copy any pertinent um, pictures or diagrams from the lecture slides into your notes. So for example, here, there's a picture of dopamine metabolism, which is very important for Parkinson's. So what I did is instead of drawing it because I don't really have time, I just copied it using the lasso tool. So the lasso tool is found here. And again, you can either just select handwriting, text boxes, or images. But because I'm only interested in the image, that's the only thing I'm gonna select. So I just draw a circle around it, hold down on it with my finger, take a screenshot, copy, excellent. Then I go back to my summary notes, press down with my finger and press paste. And I can make it as big or as small and rotate it if I like. So that's what I included here. All right, so step six is done only once you've done the main body of your notes, which is on the right here. And now step six is all about the left side column. So on the left side, remember we have our subsections and underneath that, you're gonna try to summarize in the most condensed form as you possibly can, what you have written about in the right hand column. So for example, right here, I am talking about early symptoms of Parkinson's and it took me many sentences to describe that. But then when I write it down on the left hand side, I just did it in a few words because later on when I'm revising, these are gonna be my cues about early symptoms. And this is really helpful because as you're going through your notes, this forces you to summarize and simplify very complex terms and ideas into your own words and into more simplified, digestible chunks. All right, so the very last step to this Cornell note-taking method is that there is a space at the bottom here to summarize your entire notes and your entire lecture. Um, so usually that's reserved in the bottom here, as you can see in my other notes here, I've done a summary and I've tried to just do it in about five sentences. However, I don't always end up doing it, as you can see here, uh, simply because I find that I've already summarized enough by completing the left side column, but ideally you always complete a summary. So in the end, once you have finished your notes, like here, what is really awesome about this method is that you can cover up this right side and just look at this column. So when I am reviewing, I say, okay, in my head, I ask myself, what is an overview of depression? What does it mean? And if I can't answer that, then I start looking at the light blue, which is my summary. And I say, okay, so it is a mood disorder. It's very common. Uh, can I expand on that? And if I can't recall, then I look at my main body of notes and then that will give me specific information. Or for example, here I have a bunch of acronyms and if I cannot recall what those acronyms are and how they relate to depression, then I can look at my main body of notes and find exactly what those acronyms mean. So it's just a really awesome way to review for an exam and just to organize your lecture notes. Because what I was able to do with this particular lecture, this lecture was 30 slides long and I was able to condense into just two pages. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys found that video helpful. Um, if you didn't, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, now, if you are unfamiliar on how to use GoodNotes 5 and the basic functions of it, I have made another video on a GoodNotes 5 tutorial. So be sure to check that out. Thanks so much.